Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtzgesat's videos, specifically this one that says Beyond the Edge, the Paradox of an Infinite Universe. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this one out. Is the universe infinite? Does it have an edge? Whoa. And if so, what would you see if you went there? Rift of space time. Today, we know that the universe had a beginning 14 billion years ago and that it's been expanding ever since. But something that's expanding should also have an edge, right? Well, it sort of does. <laughs> Information can't travel faster than light. That means that we can only see parts of the universe whose light has had time to reach us in the last 14 billion years. When we look outwards, observable what universe. we see is a sphere centered on us, the observable universe. But it gets a tad more complicated. Because the universe has been expanding, we know that the most far away things whose light we can see are actually 45 billion light years from us right now. Cosmic background radiation, that is when the universe was pretty young. And by pretty young, I mean less than a million years old. Sort of the afterglow from the Big Bang. And it's measured using microwave radiometers. So think of them a bit like thermometers. They could be placed on satellites because you want it away from Earth because Earth's going to cause a, quite a bit of temperature interference in order to measure it. And they just pick up tiny little variations in that glow. So you can see how this was used to basically fingerprint the universe, find out how old it is, its composition, what it was like back then. Crazy. So the observable universe is a sphere with a radius of 45 billion light years. It contains around 200 billion galaxies, each with hundreds of billions of stars. So for us, there is an edge. We're looking at the yeah. past <laughs> until there is just no past left. This edge is really more like an edge in time and in a sense, meaningless. The real universe is for see. sure bigger than what we can see. But how much? There are two options. Either the universe is really big but finite or it's truly infinite. A finite universe means that if you want to fill it with ice cream, you can do it. You need a lot of ice cream, <laughs> but it is a finite amount. Asking the real question. But sir. that leads to a weird problem. Such a universe should have an edge, a cosmic wall where space ends. And if there's an edge, there should be something outside that edge. But the universe by definition is all there is. So how could there Hyperspace? be stuff outside all there is? Does the idea of something outside of everything even make sense? I've heard the bubble theory about it being multiple universes floating in something else, possibly being holed by some bird creatures, but not sure about that. I've also heard turtles all the way down. That that one's a bit silly. <laughs> but yeah, we don't we don't know. So just a bunch of silly explanations out there for this one. Except, of course, there is a physics hack. You can have a universe that has no border, but that still could be filled with a finite amount of ice cream. What if the universe is truly finite? Imagine an the orange and a really tiny ant. The ant can only see a small piece of the skin, just as you can only see a small chunk of the universe. But if the ant starts walking, it will eventually walk around the whole orange and be back to its starting point. So it's a sphere. So the skin of an orange is not infinite, but it doesn't have a border. The universe is not like the skin of an orange, but it could be very similar. Instead of a sphere, it could be a hypersphere, where 3D space is curled on itself, which is impossible for your brain to visualize, unfortunately. <laughs> but the point is, okay. no borders, no outside of the hypersphere. From our human atmosphere... Another example, I guess it could also be like a Mobius strip, the alleged one-sided piece of paper. Our whole 3D space is like the peel of the orange. If you were aboard a spaceship flying in a straight line, you would eventually come back to Earth. How does any of this make sense? The actual physics is hard, so we have to simplify and lie a bit here. But in a what? nutshell, it all boils down to gravity. The way it works is that mass creates gravity by bending space-time. This bending is the strongest where the mass is, but sort of stretches on forever, like a very mild tension in the fabric of space-time itself. Cool. This could bend the whole universe in a way where it bends back on itself, which then makes the hypersphere. If you find this confusing, we're with you. 
If the universe happens to be a hypersphere, how could we find out how big it is? On Earth, we can see things disappear below the horizon, and that helps us calculate how big the Earth is. Scientists tried to find some sort of universe horizon. I can see the problem with this, though. If it's bigger than how, f how far light would have been able to travel, you wouldn't be able to see the horizon, so to speak. That would reveal the scale of the cosmic sphere, but didn't see anything. Which means that if the universe is a hypersphere, it needs to be so big that from our perspective, it looks like we're living on a flat surface. For this to make sense, a in before the uh, flat earthers also think we're in a flat universe. Spherical universe should be at least 1,000 times bigger than our observable part. It could be a trillion times bigger than we know, but not smaller than that. Some scientists thought all of this is way too straightforward and came up with a wilder option. The universe could be like the frosting of a donut, a hyper donut, donut universe. also impossible to visualize for your brain. This too means that if you travel in a straight line, you'd get back to where you started, but with fun complications. In a hyperdonut universe, there's not the same amount of stuff in every direction. If two spaceships fly in different directions... Oh, that's kind of like, I remember some like old world, like world building uh, video games like Civilization, you can have it use a donut world, so basically not only do the east and west sides of the screen connect, the north and south ones also do. Obviously, they neglect the other impacts on living on such a planet, but just a silly gameplay mechanic. One could get back to the start way earlier. This also means that yeah. light from faraway galaxies would do fun and confusing stuff in a sort of cosmic hall of mirrors effect. We could see faraway things in two places, but not just that, we would see it in different moments in time. That's, yeah, because of how it affects time. It's like the, then time you could go in these like perpendicular directions to you. That would be interesting. So you can kind of do a bit of relative time travel if that's the case by taking a shortcut through time. Because it's light would have taken much longer to travel mm -hmm. in one direction than the other. You could see a star being born in front of you and see that same star die on the opposite side of the oh, sky. That's cute. How big would such a hyper donut universe be? Well, because of its strange geometry, actually this is kind of the smallest possible universe, potentially just a few times bigger than the observable universe. But it could also be way, way bigger. We don't know. Yeah, I mean, if we okay. can't measure it. So much for finite universes. But what mm. if it's truly infinite and space goes on forever? What would that be like? What if the universe is truly infinite? Actually, the cosmological model used by most scientists... If the universe is truly infinite, then every possible scenario has already existed within this universe, rather than in different parallel universes. So, for those of you who say nuclear fusion is less than 20 years away, then yeah, that probably existed somewhere in this universe. <laughs> Possibly different physical laws, certainly cosmic phenomena that we wouldn't be aware of. And of course, the philosophical implications that no one or nothing is unique. Yeah, you take a lot of stuff to sink in. Describes an infinite universe. We mostly use it to calculate what happens inside our observable chunk, but if taken literally, chunk. it predicts an infinite universe. An infinite universe goes on, well, forever, with no border anywhere, also impossible to visualize. Wherever you look, you'll find more and more stuff in every possible direction. This kind of breaks our brain a bit for a few reasons. First mm -hmm. of all, if the universe is infinite, is it also eternal and has been there forever? Was there a- Well, eternal in the literal sense means inside of a different time dimension. So I guess if everything is connected, would it necessarily be eternal? I have to think about that one. When there was nothing everywhere, and then there was something everywhere. Well, we don't know. But we have a lot of evidence for the Big Bang, so it really seems like the universe started at some point in the past. Yeah. But wait, since the Big Bang, the universe has been expanding. Unless the Big Bang was, was somehow not really the origin of the universe, but that would be the only real thing that would point to infinite. Can an infinite thing that's the everywhere argument against become it? even bigger? Cosmic expansion just means that the distance between galaxies is growing with time. Even an infinite space can become bigger. Welcome to the Paradoxes of Infinity. Okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Like, you have the countable infinities where it's, you know, if you had an infinite amount of time, you could, say, state 
all the integers. If you had an infinite time, you could count one, two, three, and eventually hit infinity. And then there's the uncountable type where it's like, list all the numbers between one and two, but where do you start? You can't, it's not at 1.1 1 .1 or 1.001 1 or 1.0001. You, you don't really have a starting point. So yeah, it's weird how infinities can be bigger than each other. Infinity gets much weirder though. As you travel with your spaceship in a straight line, you find new galaxies, stars and planets, new wonders, new weird stuff, probably new aliens and new life forms stranger than you could ever imagine. But after a long time, you might find... It'd be hard to get back. Could you even get back? A special thing in the universe. Yourself. Yeah. An exact copy of you watching this video right now. How can that be? That well, everything different. in existence is made of Makes a finite sense. amount of different particles. And a finite number of different particles can only be combined in a finite number of ways. Like that us. number may be so large that it feels like infinity to our brains, but it's not really. If you have finite options to build things, but infinite space that is full of things in all directions forever, then it makes sense that by pure chance, there will likely be repetition. Eventually. Although just because something is possible doesn't mean it will actually happen. Maybe the universe goes on forever, but only the boring stuff repeats itself endlessly. Yeah, but if it's truly infinite, everything that's possible would have had to have, have happened again if it truly is infinite. Because even things with an absurdly low probability will happen because you have an infinite amount of time, infinite amount of space. Anyway. Maybe there is really only one you. But if the laws of physics are the same everywhere, then far, far away, gas could have given birth to stars. But that's just it. Are the laws of physics going to be the same anywhere in this sort of infinite scenario? I'm, I'm not so sure. Planets where primitive genetic information could emerge from chemistry, which might have ended up in cells and animals that evolved in really unlikely ways, and eventually apes that learn how to create online videos. <laughs> it happened at least once, so the chance is not zero. Even if the chance of there being an exact copy of you watching this video right now is almost picture zero, almost zero is still a huge number in an infinite yep. universe. Unfortunately, you'll never meet, because almost zero still means the chance is incredibly small. Earth as it exists right now. You'd meet if you had an infinite amount of time though. That's the tricky thing with infinity. ...is so unlikely, you'd have to travel incredibly far to find a second identical Earth. <laughs> Some 10 to the 10 to the 29, a 1 followed by 100 octillion zeros, time... They actually calculated it out? Wow, interesting. ...size of the observable universe. That's a big number. ...so far that it kind of means forever far away. Still, in a truly infinite universe, every combination of particles could reasonably not just occur only once, but an infinite number of times. I mean, this whole thing of uh, super unlikely things, and by the way, these nuclear reactions way more common than this, but it's just you're playing, you're playing your Monte Carlo game so many times because any absurd type of radioactive decay that has even low probability will happen, such as getting antimatter from bananas. Very low, you need radioactive potassium-40, and it usually decays under beta minus or an electron, but there's the 0.0001% or something like that. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but a very low chance you could get a positron, which is antimatter. Instead, antimatter wouldn't last very long, but technically possible. So there actually might be an infinite amount of copies of yourself. All of them are living within their own observable universe. All of them looking at the sky, never able to ever interact with each other because all of you are so far apart. Maybe some of these need infinite zoom for all of them to talk to each other. ...made different decisions, fell in love with different people, took different forks in life. Maybe one of them has solved physics. Maybe another one is... Has solved... What? <laughs> it's like solving a subject. It's like, can you solve engineering? I mean, that's... I get what they're saying, yeah. It, it can be... It can be quite silly with these duplicates and you have an infinite amount of instances, but that's just... That's just silly. ...in your exact life, but is wearing a funny hat. But if there are so many infinite copies of you, identical to you, who are you? Well, it doesn't matter, because you are as real as real beings get, if you exist infinite times, or if you exist yeah, once. Really does that really matter? <sighs> it's time to stop now. While these scenarios are possible on paper, we've entered science philosophy here. Currently, none of these ideas are testable <laughs> or provable. If the universe yeah. is infinite, we will never oh, know. Oh, they're donut-shaped universe. The reality is, for us, the universe is finite and has an edge. And we can see the edge, the edge in time. 
everything we can interact with is within the observable universe, and most likely, this will stay true forever. Even if this finite oh, no. universe feels really small know. to you, <laughs> it's more than big enough to fulfill all the dreams that we and our descendants can ever come up with. Infinitely enough for all of us. I guess it doesn't really matter. What they were saying about how that affects you, I don't, I don't really see how that would change anything with the universe is infinite or not. But again, we're getting more philosophical than anything about science and certainly anything even remotely resembling engineering. Interesting topic, though. Always makes you wonder. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.